Hello, I'm Mrs. Charity. Welcome to the Glorious Heritage Overview of Catholic Church History. Discover the amazing story of the Church together as a family as you color and paste your way through the timeline and printables, which you can find on our website. And now, let's move into our topic for today. Hello, I'm Mr. Charity, and welcome to the Glorious Heritage Catholic History video series. Today's topic is 109, Pope Gregory's Calendar. If you look on your timeline and summary question sheets, you'll notice that we are in the green time period, which we have called Revolt. If you don't have a timeline or summary question sheets, you can find them on our website. Do you know how many days there are in a year? If you said 365, then you're close, but not exactly correct. Maybe some of you said there are 365 and one quarter days in a year, and you would be even closer still, but not correct also. Actually, there are 365.2422 days in a year, which is only a small fraction of time different than what you guessed. But what does it matter, you may ask? Why is such a small difference important? First, before I address your question, I want to tell you about the Julian calendar. This calendar was actually made by Julius Caesar way back around 50 BC. Julius noticed that the time of the year was not matching up with the Roman calendar. For instance, the calendar said it should be springtime, but in fact it was summertime. So Julius realized that there aren't exactly 365 days in a year, and he invented the leap year. His new calendar worked, but it wasn't perfect. Each year that went by, the Julian calendar lost 11 minutes. So by the year 1582, this small difference of 11 minutes per year added up to many days. In 1582, the church was having a difficult time trying to keep Easter Sunday on the appointed day because the days were so off from what the calendar said they should be. So Pope Gregory XIII decided to revise the calendar again after Julius Caesar. This new calendar is called the Gregorian calendar, and it's actually the one we still use today. On October 4th, 1582, all of the Catholic world went to bed. But when they woke up, the new calendar took effect and immediately skipped 10 days. So what this means is that in the year 1582, there are 10 days missing out of the month of October. Because the Pope decided on this new calendar, all of the Catholics obeyed. But the Protestants did not go along with the new calendar. They actually thought it was some kind of a trick to make them become Catholic again. Eventually, when the Protestants realized the calendar was a good idea, they adopted it also, but it took them a long time. Okay, here is Mrs. Charity to tell you more about the Gregorian calendar. Hello, I am Mrs. Charity. Did you hear Mr. Charity tell you that there were 10 days missing out of the month of October in 1582? Catholics went to bed on October 4th and woke up the next day, but it was 10 days later. That means they woke up on October 15th. I was wondering, what happens to all those who had birthdays on any days between October 5th and 14th? Did their birthdays get skipped that year also? I hope not. Welcome back. Now let me tell you a short story about the Protestants and how they did not want to go along with the new calendar of Pope Gregory XIII. In 1582, Pope Gregory XIII introduced the Gregorian calendar to correct the inaccuracies of the Julian calendar. This reform was necessary to align the celebration of Easter with the spring equinox. Father Matteo, a Catholic priest, eagerly embraced the new calendar he was so happy that it would bring order to the liturgical year. However, the Protestants and Eastern Schismatics resisted the new calendar. They viewed the change as papal imposition, fearing it symbolized Catholic dominance. The Gregorian calendar was put forth in 1582, but can you believe that it actually took until the year 1700 for the majority of Protestants to go along with it? Wow, is that stubborn! Well, that's all for today. Come back next time and we'll tell you one about one of my favorite subjects and devotions, the apparitions of our Lord in a sacred heart to St. Margaret Mary Alacoque. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new today. 
visit our website, www.gloriousheritagecartoons.com, where you can find more educational supplements, cartoons, books, and printables. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram to get notified of our latest updates and videos. And if you like our work and want to support us, you can make a donation on our website or on Patreon. We really appreciate your generosity and kindness. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel, and see you next time.